In this Imagine It Tech Tip, we're going to take a look at an Autodesk Inventor plastic part command called the Grill Command. We're going to talk about its versatility, how to access the command, how to set up a proper sketch for a grill, and then lastly, how to actually complete the Grill Command through the different options we have inside the dialog box. When we start talking about the grill command inside of Autodesk Inventor, we really want to make sure we understand where we could actually utilize this. Now the grill command has a connotation to it that it is primarily used for plastic part design. However, that is only one of its uses that you could utilize this tool. I have actually utilized the grill command pretty well inside the sheet metal environment as well. There's one thing to be aware of as you're using this tool though if you are going to use it for sheet metal is that it will add and remove material so as you're going through the grill command when we finish this example you're going to see that we have material added to the bottom of this piece which you don't want to have that for your sheet metal so make sure you watch your thicknesses if you are going to use this in the sheet metal environment as compared to a normal modeling or plastic part design now, in order to utilize the grill command, you have to actually turn on a certain panel to get the tool. Now, in earlier versions of Inventor, let's say 2013, these tools were readily available and you didn't have to turn this on. But a little bit newer releases of the software actually turn the panel off. So if we go to our ribbon in the upper right here, we have a pull down where we can turn on additional panels. Here I'm going to turn on the plastic part panel. And this gives me another set of tools that I can utilize. So we're going to focus on the grill command here. And before I even start the tool, I want to point out that I already have a sketch created in here. Sketch number eight is actually just has its dimensions turned off. But what I have here is a boundary profile. It's a rectangle with some fillets. And I have a circle in here as well as some additional line segments. So you might look at this and see that, well, it's kind of set up like the rib command so far. You know, I've got these lines that can extend beyond or go in between your boundary profile. However, the most important thing is to actually have this boundary profile. The grill command would not work without this. So make sure you have something that bounds how your grill is going to be laid into your part. Now when I start the grill command, the first thing I need to pick is the boundary profile. I'll go in here and select this boundary profile there. And I can also adjust how high it goes up above my face. That's my first value here. Right now it's going to be flat with that. That's exactly what I want. I can have the overall height, which is currently 0.2 inches. This will actually give me a little bit of thickness below the inside face of this plastic part that I have inside here. Then we also have our thickness of that exterior shape that's going to go down into the part as well. The 0.05 inch is fine. If I want to make it a little bit better, let's say 0.625. Next up we have the island. Now the island allows you to select a internal profile to be completely solid. I'll go ahead and select that. And then if you want to have a gap or a thickness value to that as well, mine's just going to be solid. Next up we have the rib command. Now on the rib tab here, we can select our different profiles that we want to have for this particular rib. I'm going to choose all of those, as well as these guys here. I'm just having these shortened to show that you could do this. And the ones that I have extended beyond as well, so you can see the effect of what that does to your grill. I'm going to turn my preview on here so you can see what's happening as well. Those little eyeglasses. So you can see that the Rib profiles that were selected do not go beyond the boundary, but the ones on the inside do not extend. There is no extend option here for that. Next up we have a spar. Now the spar will be a supporting member that I have here with these. And the spar can be a different thickness than your rib. So if I look at these two different tabs here, the rib tab has its own thickness value, its own height, and its own shelf space to go up and down from the top. And then I have the spar, which has its own settings, so I can have two different unique ribs inside of here. The main rib, if you will, and then a supporting spar to help with the ribs. 
Then I also have a draft option in case this has to have draft on it for pulling out of a mold. Uh, for now, I'm just going to leave it at zero. However, the last thing I want to take a look at here before I say OK is my expanded options that I have with these chevrons. This will actually show me the flow area that I have that will go through this, the vacant space, if you will. So if I go back over to my boundary and I make this a little bit bigger, let's say 0.125, you can see the boundary gets bigger, but the internal flow area does not, just as expected. I'll return that to 0625. For my rib, let's say I make these larger, 0.0625. And that's going to reduce my flow area. Well, that's quite big. How about I remember to put the zero in there? There we go. See, that reduces my flow area. And then for the spars, I'll make these 0.125. A little bit bigger thickness on those yet again. And I'll, I'll choose OK. So there's my grill that gets created. I'm going to flip this upside down so you can see the bottom. You can see it added a little bit of material into the bottom of the part there, as well as my little shelves there for the island. I got a little bit of space there. Probably need to go back and revisit those spars to make sure it goes into it. It would have been better for me to actually have that spar go right across rather than terminating at that tangency because now I have this gap here. And that's actually happening on each one of those. So make sure you build that correctly as you're doing it. And then this becomes a feature like anything else. So I can mirror this feature across to the other side. Let me just use one of my origin planes here as a reference. So very easy to create a second grill based on that as well. So I'm going to put this part file up on the blog as well so you can play with it. If you want to adjust this grill to make it actually work the way it should properly, go right ahead. That's a great exercise for you. And this has been a look at the grill command inside of Autodesk Inventor.